Hey, my name's Dave. This is Engine 33 right now, and this is Fleet Friday. This is engine 33. It's our reserve engine right now. It's a 2003 E1 Cyclone 2 with the M11 Cummins diesel engine in it. We're in this right now as our front line's getting some work done to the body. So we go into reserves when fleet takes our engines, they do maintenance on them, or there's a mechanical issue that needs to be fixed. Uh, we're very fortunate that we have a pretty robust fleet of these E1s that we use. Uh, these were our frontline rigs a long time ago, and now we're using these engines as reserves. So when ours goes in, we kind of loan this one from fleet. Uh, we move over some of our tools, our personal equipment, and then we use these while our rig's being fixed. This one has a really personal story for me as it was actually the first engine I ever rode on with our late engineer, Mike Freeman. And now I'm fortunate enough that I get to drive it 10 years later as an engineer here at Station 33. me and we'll take a look inside. So this is the engineer seat. This is where I sit and drive. Unlike our frontline Pierce engine, this one's a little bit tighter. We still have a doghouse between the captain and I where the engine sits, that M11 Cummins that powers this. 
This one's a little different than our frontline engine as well as we have a PTO shift. So we have to actually take this one out of road and put it in a pump unlike our frontline engine where we're just fortunate enough to just press a button and it puts it in pump. This one we actually have to shift it into pump and put it in drive. Some of the other things is it has a Jake brake like our frontline engine does. It's just a little bit different. It's an actual exhaust brake. Um, this one doesn't have the LED lights like ours does, our frontline engine does. So we actually have a generator in the back that powers all of our scene lights. So I'm not able just to hit those switches like our frontline and immediately turn them on. There's a couple extra steps. But other than that, driving experience is a lot like our front line, except it doesn't have independent front suspension. It has a solid front axle. So it's a little bit rougher, especially for the people riding in back, as I have an air seat and so does the captain and the people in back kind of get bounced around a little bit. So right here we have the uh, status center for the Kuzma system. And what this does is it keeps all the batteries topped off as well as the computers and everything that's currently running in the engine topped off so it's not draining down the batteries. We have a large bank of batteries that power this engine, but if we were just to leave all those computer systems and everything running all the time, the problem would be is they would drain the battery down and we'd have a starting problem. So we have this uh, charge system that tells us how much voltage we're pulling in and amps we're currently pulling. And if there was an issue, we can kind of tell with the battery condition. And this is awesome because these are just like our front lines, the auto eject. So as soon as I push it on, there's a little uh, pin in here that pushes out that plug and it shoots it out. So we can take off with it plugged in and it starts on the shore power. So we'll uh, take a quick look here in the back. So we're riding four. We've been pretty fortunate to ride four these last couple sets. As you can tell, this is not as big as our frontline engines. You guys have seen on some of the other Fleet Fridays that the Pierce engines have a lot of room. They've been spec'd out for our current EMS compartments and current EMS storage. We're a little bit tighter in this one, but we've moved over a lot of the very important things to make sure that we're able to function just like we would if we were in our frontline. We have a compartment that we keep some of our EMS kits over here and then some of our stuff we would use for like good intent calls like fire alarms, uh, lockouts, all that kind of stuff we keep in the, in the doghouse compartment. And when, well, when we get to the other side, we'll show you where we keep our EMS stuff right now. So as you can tell, today we're in the bay. It's because it's about seven degrees outside. It's the end of February. And if you look up there, we have our dry suit. It's a Mustang suit. And the plan for that today is the Charlie seat firefighter sitting behind Josh Schmidt, our captain, is gonna put that suit on up to their knees as they're buckled in the fire engine. We'll get over to the call where it's either like a person through the ice or a dog through the ice. They'll jump out and finish suiting up and zipping it up as we go try to do a rescue from the shore. We'll try to reach them with a hook or we'll throw a rope bag to them. And if we can't get them out that way, the plan is for the firefighter to go into the water with a rope attached to them and a big carabiner and they'll go behind them and clip it around the victim. And then we will pull them up onto the ice shelf and pull them into the shore. We also have uh, PFDs back here and I can show you where there's, those are at. So we keep that up there during the winter months, especially as we have ice and cold water rescue possibilities. So here's our pump panel and our hose complement is very similar to the hose complement that's on our front line, except for our trash line. The trash line in this is over on the other side, kind of in a small compartment. That's one of the big takeaways from this to our front line. But other than that, the hoses are loaded exactly the same as they are on our front line with the yellow line coming out the driver's side and the red line and the two and a half line coming out the passenger side. Our pump panel on this one's a little bit different. It's not in an enclosed compartment like it is on our front line. The pump's actually a little different. This is a two stage pump as opposed to a single stage pump. So there's a couple different things you would have to do as well as on our frontline engine, you've seen it has a dial to set your pressure. This one's a little bit different because it has a button, so you increase and decrease. It has the same preset mode where it'll ramp it up to the predetermined PSI, but it's not as accurate as being able to turn that dial right to our predetermined discharge pressures for all of our pre-connects. So it takes a little bit more finessing. But other than that, everything's laid out very similar. All of our discharges are all color coded. We're very fortunate in that aspect. The intakes are similar, but there's a couple small differences. This one is a manual intake opposed to on our front line, they're all automatic. So this one has a crank wheel that you would actually turn to open up this discharge. The front and 
passenger side intakes have these little switches right here, the ones kind of hidden underneath here, and you can you will toggle this switch and it'll open up. On our front line, there's three intake gauges and they're very clean and laid out. This one's just a little bit differently. You can also see that we have rubber wheel chocks here. So we would chalk the rear wheels. You've probably seen on some of the other Fleet Fridays that we have aluminum wheel chocks that are housed underneath the rear wheel. These ones we'll use, we don't have those compartments so we'll use these rubber ones that kind of hang over the transfer valve so starting down the rest of the side you can see that we have two sections of our hard suction hose we have a hard suction hose on our frontline engine but it's kind of hidden behind the ladder compartment so not a lot of people think or know we have that hard suction hose my engine company here at engine 33 we're in the middle of the district we're very fortunate that we have lots of fire hydrants around us there's not a lot of opportunity for us to draft but a couple districts over, like down in District 17, we have a lot of unhydrated areas that we could possibly be that drafting engine and supplying the firefighting effort down a driveway or down a dirt road. So we're all set up to start that drafting and get that process moving. So this is a reserve. It has everything that we'd have on our front line, but just a little bit different layout than we would prefer to have. I think our frontline engines laid out very cleanly and I would love to show you guys around that someday, but we'll go compartment by compartment and show you what this one has. So this is the engineer compartment. We have some other nozzles if we needed them. We have a couple of different adapters, road flares. And like I said, we have a generator. So you'll see over here, it's a square D box, just like you would have at your house. The generator goes through that breaker box and then all the power will be sent to the other lights and outlets around the fire engine. This is also the engineer compartment. As you can tell, it's kind of tight. We got to keep our stuff kind of small. This is where I'll keep my bunker gear when we're going on calls. We have a toolbox just like in our front line. We have those pony sections of five inch and everything else the same as we would have on the front line, just a little bit smaller and more compact. I have my set of irons that I would take on a fire as well as my hand light and my through the lock tool bag. That's about it, it's pretty tight. We have our pump chart. Uh, this pump chart gives us all the predetermined pump pressures for our current hose lines that we have, as well as some of our um, horizontal standpipe lines in the back. So if we go more than the norm, if you will, and the math doesn't happen quick enough in my head, I can go check and double check myself on this pump chart. Just like on our front line, we have a couple, we call them torpedo tubes, at least we do here. That's where we keep our spare bottles. If we're going to recycle at a fire or some sort of call that we need to recycle our bottles to get some fresh air bottles, we'll come pull them off here. And then we can go to another firehouse and fill up some air bottles because we don't have a compressor here at station 33. This is also my compartment where I keep my pack. And then right now, like we talked about a little while ago, it's super cold outside, it's real icy. So we keep some ice melting here during the winter, as well as some absorbent. We have a lot of highway around station 33. We have sections of I-25 and 470. So we're constantly on the highway running car accidents. So we keep some of this absorbent there. And then we have our rope bag for if we were gonna go do a slippery slope, like we can do a simple three to one with this rope bag, as well as it's set up right now that we can do Ice Rescue has a big carabiner, a carabiner that would attach to the rescuer and a big carabiner that would go around the victim and we would clip it around the victim and pull them up onto the ice shelf. This is a diesel engine. It only runs on diesel. There's no def like in some of the frontline engines. We have a def system here for when our frontline comes back. This is pre-def, uh, so it only takes diesel fuel. There's not another filler like there is on some of the other newer engines. This compartment is set up for wildland up here. These are called our web gear packs. So these web gears are what we would take if we were on a wildland fire. And what it is, is it's a set of webbing gear that you clip on and it has a shelter on the back. It has a mask, has a helmet, a couple bottles of water in there. So there's one for each riding position as well as PFDs. So these are the PFDs that we use anytime we're near any water, we're gonna put these on. So right here's our rope bag that we would use for throwing. We would take this rope bag out, we'll take a little rope out of it and dunk it in the water and we'll throw it to the victim as the rescuer is going in in the Mustang suit to rescue that victim. 
So this compartment has our donut roll for our blitz fire on our frontline engine. This is in this same compartment, but it's standing up. Compartment space is a little bit tighter in this engine, so we had to lay it down on its side and we can't really connect it how it is right now. We also have some overhaul tarps, some power cords, as well as our fan. The one cool thing about this engine, opposed to our frontline engine, is we don't have a generator on our frontline engine. Most of the tools that are in the fire service anymore are battery powered. We still have some stuff that's getting phased out that is shore power or plug power. So having, being able to plug into this fire engine with a generator is super helpful for some of those calls. So like we talked about on our front line, we have LED scene lights everywhere. Well, this engine has scene lights as well, but I have to turn on the generator to get these four scene lights to work. It's not as easy as just pressing that button like it is in our front line, but it works great and it's nice to have them, especially when you're on those dark highway calls. Here's the back of the fire engine. It's set up very similar to our front line engine. We have our five inch, our 800 foot of five inch up here. And on this side, we have our horizontal standpipe. It's set up exactly the same with our 400 feet on the bottom, our 400 feet of two and a half on the top, and our 150 foot horizontal standpipe bundle connected up on top. It's set up very similar to our frontline engine. We have a couple tools. We have a Colorado hook as well as a New York roof hook up here, some more absorbent backboard and up on top we have some wildland progressive packs where if we need to do a progressive hose lay off this engine we'll take them off the top and we can tie into the engine and start a progressive wildland attack from here so the back of the engine set up kind of for rescue for car accidents as well as for some long two and a half stretches my engine company we practice a lot on hose deployment and hose positioning one of the things we've realized is when we're doing an extended two and a half attack, the 200 foot pre-connect is not long enough all the time and it's a lot faster than me trying to get into my engineer compartment. To get a nozzle bring back here, we've decided that we're gonna keep an extra nozzle back here. So we call this our little sneaky nozzle. So we have an extra two and a half nozzle back here. And what we'll do is we'll take the bundle off, lay it on the bumper, and then we can stretch three, four, 500 feet of two and a half and doing a two and a half attack very quickly and very efficiently. So a couple other cool things we have is some battery power tools in here. So we have a Homaltro combi tool that's battery powered. We have a DeWalt Sawzall that's battery powered, as well as we have a small DeWalt rotary saw that we use quite a bit for cutting small locks, gates, stuff like that quick egress for us to get into places and then the truck company to bring in some big saws to do some real big forcible entry if we need it, needed it. But this has been a lifesaver getting into some of our small gated communities as well as forcing some small doors and window bars, stuff like that, that we've been able to use it on a couple cool calls. So coming over to the passenger side, this is where the generator is stored. So like we've been talking about, this engine has an onboard generator a lot like our tower trucks do. The little bit difference between this one and that one is you have to come out and actually start this one. So we would pull our hydrant bag here out of the way and this is on a, on a slider so we can pull this out and we will pull it all the way out. And it's actually hooked up to a shore power line that's hooked up to that breaker box that's over on my side. So as soon as you start it and it's running, it's gonna start these scene lights up as well as it's going to put power to the outlets that are on the back of the fire engine. So if we needed to use that fan to blow off smoke or anything like that, we can use those outlets if utilities have been controlled at the house. So this is our high rise compartment. We're first or second due engine to the DTC where we have some of our mid rises and high rises. So here's our high rise packs. So this would be placed on the firefighter's shoulder or on their bottle. We also have this bag here where we have all the connections that we would need to hook into the stairwell standpipe system. We have our search rope bag. It's a 200 foot rope that we have. So if we are searching a large building or something like that, we can tie off to a known location and it's marked with knots in it. So we can figure out our way in and our way out using this rope bag. So a lot like our frontline engine, we have a ladder rack that comes down. This ladder rack 
comes down on hydraulics and it comes down, we have our roof ladder as well as our 28 foot ladder and a little attic ladder up there. Another hook and a pike pole up there. Over here, we have our firefighter compartment. This is where we keep all of our hand tools. We have a pig, a halligan, you know, a couple sets of irons. We have a sledgehammer, some bolt cutters, all the standard firefighting equipment. And then unfortunately in this engine, we can't keep our med equipment inside. There's just not enough room, unfortunately, with four of us in here. So we keep our med equipment in this compartment here. It actually works out really well. Um, the Delta seat firefighter and the Charlie seat firefighter can run over here and start getting things out. And then Captain Schmidt and myself will come meet them over here and we'll kind of split up, especially when it's on one of those really high acuity calls like a cardiac arrest. We all have predetermined roles on my engine company. So I know exactly what I'm gonna be doing when we get on one of those calls. I get handed the monitor and I know that that's my job. So it works out really well that everything can kind of get set down over here. You grab your tool, you know you're getting started with first and then we can go inside and get to work. We have some water cans. We generally don't pull those all too often because our fire engine is a giant water can. We have 750 gallons on this engine. So if we need to, we'll just stretch a hose. It's no big deal. It's great training if we don't use it. So we love stretching hose and just practicing our craft when we get to outside. All of our engines are on these Niederman systems. So there's a magnet that holds it to the engine and it'll ride along this track that gets a vacuum pulled onto it and it gets exhausted out. And then once it hits that stop at the end there, it actually pops off and it keeps the bay a little bit cleaner. We don't have a drive-through bay here at station 33, so we have to back in. So as somebody's backing me in, what Captain Schmidt or the Charlie seat firefighter will do is just clip it on right as I pull into the bay. So it starts sucking that exhaust out so we don't fill up our bay with exhaust. Here's the passenger side hose load compartment our two and a half hose load. It's a 200 foot pre-connect, just like on all of our front lines, as well as our 200 foot inch and three quarter. Uh, these are laid out exactly the same as they would be on our front lines. The only difference is, is this is not behind that closed door, that roll up door, like you've seen on some of the other fleet Fridays. And the trash line. So like I was talking about, this trash line's a little bit different. It's loaded in this little dunnage area with this strap right here. And what you would do is you would pull this strap out and then you would go to either side of the fire engine depending on if we pulled past it or the fire was in front of us. And there's about 10 to 15 feet of hose flaked in there that's not in the strap. And then you would unstrap it, you'd grab a flake or two in the nozzle and you would walk out to where your fire's at. So this compartment here is not really a compartment. What it is is it's a way for us to get to our pump panel from behind as well as some of our levers. On our frontline engine, you pull a lever down in it. That's how it kind of opens up that valve. On this one, it's a long rod that actually pulls that lever open. So we can get in here, we can work on our foam system, our foam induction system. We can see the backs of our tanks, as well as some of the valves and the levers that are back there. Especially this time of year, they get kind of gunked up with road grime. So we try to get in there with a power washer every once in a while and clean some of that road grime off and then get some white lithium grease in there because it doesn't collect as much dirt and try to spray some of those joints so they operate a little bit smoother like they would in the summer when they're clean. So here's our Charlie seat. This is where our Charlie seat firefighter sits. They have a couple tools that are at their disposal. They have our four gas meter here that's always plugged in. So it's ready to go when we go on that CO call or some weird smells and bells call, we'll fire that up and bring it with us. We have two seats in here. They can sit in this small jump seat and sit forward and see where we're going. And then when we're going to a call that requires them to have their pack on, they'll ride backwards and put their pack on just like you would on our front line, as well as some of their medical equipment, like those gloves, the pediatric kit we keep in there some of our other small items that we don't use all the time, like elevator lockout keys and things like that are kept in between the Delta and Charlie seat firefighter here on this side. Moving on up, this is Captain Schmidt's seat right now where he's sitting today. Captain Schmidt uses that MDT. He's the one that's gonna map me into the calls if I don't know where we're going. He gets all of our notes on there that tell us what kind of call we're going to, 
where we're going, pre-plans, priors, all those kinds of things. He'll give me all the information I need about turns, where we're going, and then kind of fill us all in on what kind of call we're going to. He's the one that talks to dispatch and he's the one that keeps us in line. Coming around front, this is our front intake. And then all the equipment that we would need to use that front intake to catch a hydrant, we have here in the front bumper. It's all the same stuff that we would keep in the hydrant bag for the most part, but it's just kind of kept loosely in here. This is my go-to for most of our hydrants here, at least in station 33's first do. I like to park real tight up against the hydrant at if all possible, leave room for the truck companies where we're at. We have a truck company to the south of us, to the north of us, and one that's very close to the east of us. So I really try to position so the truck company can get in and use their aerial device if necessary. So this engine's super special to me. Like I said, this was the first engine I ever got to ride on here at South Metro 10 years ago. And my engineer, my first days here at South Metro was Mike Freeman. Uh, Freeman was badge number one and Freeman passed away from occupational cancer. This was actually the engine that he was laid to rest in. Actually on top of it, it has a 74-1 on top of it. Even though this is rig 3335, we've kind of denoted this Freeman's rig. And that's kind of how it's known around the fire department because of this sticker and the 74-1 on top. Well, thanks for coming by for this Fleet Friday. I'm glad you guys came over here to Station 33. I'm glad you guys spent a little time with me and let me show you guys around 3335, known as Freeman's rig. Come by anytime. We're always open.